I got to tell you, this week has been uh, pretty positive news and what's going on. And uh, today, there's really no difference. It looks like uh, there's some uh, pretty positive sentiment, but I have to explain why I'm actually buying a little bit of Bitcoin. So before we jump into that exact reasoning, let me just do a quick uh, rundown of some positivity uh, that is happening over this last week. And I got to tell you, it has been a pretty darn good week. This is from Watcher Guru. You can find the link in the description to follow uh, him or her or that group. And uh, it lays it out pretty simply. And there's uh, 10 different points, which uh, is summarized beautifully here. One, as we all have known, U.S. judge rules Ripple XRP is not a security. That's fantastic. U.S. inflation falls to 3%, which is lower than expectations. And I, in, inevitably, the Fed would actually win out. But what I was worried about of was them doing too much too fast and just crashing the market. And so far, they haven't done, uh, we haven't went into a massive depression yet. So if uh, U.S. inflation falls to 3%, I will take that win. Europe's going to launch their first spot Bitcoin ETF this month. And I got to tell you, that's uh, pretty positive news for to get institutional investors aboard. And I think everything was kicked off by the BlackRock Fidelity and ARK ETF, hopefully being approved sometime soon. Former SEC chair says spot Bitcoin ETF should be approved. And that was Jay Clayton. And we had covered that a couple of days ago. Uh, but take that with a grain of salt. I don't know why uh, Jay couldn't do it himself, but here we are. Coinbase relists uh, Ripple XRP. BlackRock CEO says crypto will transcend international currencies due to global demand as far as Bitcoin. SEC acknowledges BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF. SEC acknowledges Fidelity, VanEck, Wisdom Tree, and Invesco spot ETF apps. And um, Bank of America, even though they are one of those standards that we have here as far as American banks, they're ordered to pay $250 million for charging illegal fees. So if everybody talks about how great banks are, well, don't forget about them and Wells Fargo and JP Morgan as they manipulate prices, especially in the gold market. That was just JP Morgan, though. And then lastly, the Australian Securities Exchange received its first spot Bitcoin ETF application. So, I mean, in all honesty, this whole week has been extremely positive and uh, I'm pretty happy with things are going. And you know on this channel, I don't, I don't, get, I don't get bullish too often. But when I take a look back and, and see what's going on, I'm like, yeah, it's a pretty good been a pretty damn good week. And then also, uh, we haven't covered this too much, but the hash rate uh, just hit an all-time high just a couple of days ago. There is a, uh, this is the website looking at Bitcoin, fantastic free charts you can check out, links also in the description. And if we zoom in, we can see that just a couple of days ago, we've actually hit the, uh, the mark of the highest Bitcoin hash rate. All the different machines and miners working away tirelessly to mine that Bitcoin and to process transactions. And we just hit an all-time high, even though we have had some negative price appreciation. Again, pay attention to those who build in the bear because they will crush it in the bull. So again, good things are happening. Very happy. I'm not going to say I'm super duper bullish, but uh, I'm warming up. I'm warming up to the idea. And uh, we'll see where things lay. So that will lead me to the reason why you're here. Why is Rob, even though he's a little bit bullish, why is he buying less Bitcoin? And it really comes down to this. There's a plan. And everybody should put a plan in action when things are stable, because that is the most sane you're going to be when you put together your plan. Now, I can't tell you what to do. This is not financial advice. I'm not your dad. You do whatever you want to do. This is just things that I'm doing. And I'm trying to stick to the plan as opposed to get ran off. And it really comes down to dynamic DCing. This is uh, Ben's website. I steal from it constantly. And you can check it out as well. Link in the description. But I'm always taking a look at the, at the time in risk bands. And we can just see right here that right now, Bitcoin is currently in the 0 0.5 to 0 0.6. What that means is the price action of when it's actually there or on these days. And when I take a look at it, I see this. I see, okay, Bitcoin, this is my base case, 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. I'm going to start there. And then as it kind of slides to the right, I'm either going to buy a little less and then sell off because there's only so many days that I was in this super overheated territory. But if it goes to the left, well, I'm going to actually increase my dollar cost averaging, even though it scares the hell out of me sometimes. Even I get scared when things go a little bit lower, but you have to stick to your plan because you made a plan, right? 
So to break this down like this, this is how I see it. And again, you are free to do whatever you want to do. This is just what I am doing. And there are a plethora of different options out there. And I, this is not the best just because I do it. I'm sure, trust me, there's way smarter people out there, but this is what I'm doing. Seems to work out okay. So on this point, 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 is where my base case is. So let's just say, and we talked about this before, let's say a hundred bucks a week, very conservative round numbers. I may buy more, I may buy less. This is just what it is. And then as we move to the right and left, maybe you want to decrease a little bit on the right side. Maybe you want to instead of 100 bucks a week, 75 bucks a week, because things are getting a little overheated. Maybe you want to go to the left side in those smaller days. Maybe you want to say to yourself, hmm, maybe I should actually start buying more because people are getting more fearful. And, you know, be greedy when others are fearful and buy blood in the streets, all that great stuff. Again, left to right, we can see that as it goes down. And then, of course, as it goes way down on the left side, when people are, you know, filling up their diapers, maybe this is a time to buy a little bit more because in the grand scheme of things, things should go up. Now, Bitcoin can go to zero. I have to make that statement. And you should never invest more than you can afford to lose. You should understand that everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Never leave anything on exchanges. Never use leverage and take profits along the way because the way everyone broke, take profits. Those are the rules underneath my big, enormous head, which you can see right there. So again, have a plan. And that's how things look to me. And of course, as we start to, to move to the right, when things start to get overheated, that's when I'm going to sell a little bit. And that's just my plan. Now, uh, my plan is not your plan. My goals are not your goals. Let's take a look at Michael's strategy. Here's their plan. They don't care. They're like, where are their moves, right or left? We're just going to buy a bunch. <laughs> that's, and that's essentially it. Michael Saylor might have different plans than you, because I don't know if you're a billionaire, but uh, I believe Michael Saylor is. So he has different plans because it's based on the company and the stock price and what he's trying to do over there. So it might differ a little bit. Also, here's another point to consider. I'm pretty sure Michael Saylor owns other assets besides Bitcoin. I know it sounds crazy, but just keep that in mind when you're thinking to yourself, I'm gonna hold forever, which you can do. Yeah, not your dad. And then of course, this is, if you really wanna take a look at, these are your friends. But these are your friends who are calling you right now going, hey, man, what's up with XRP? What's going on with Bitcoin? And they're going to keep calling you and so on and so on and so forth. This is how they see things as far as risk assessments. They're like, nope. And as it gets uh, more fearful, they're like, you're a loser for buying. And they don't start buying until things really super heat up. And that, to me, is a recipe for disaster. But again, that's how this, this, that's how your friends see it. And you have to, you have to just be patient with them and you know, pick your spots. But I will give you a, a, sw a little piece of advice. Don't push anybody into investing into anything they don't want to do. Just remind them that I was talking to a friend today and I said, I was trying to explain the, the four year cycles and I made it very clear, but it could all go to zero. So don't expect just because the four-year cycles have worked the last 12 years that they're going to work again. You could lose everything. So very risky. Go from there. That way, you know, if they come back and they say, hey, man, I invested into Pepe coin. What the hell happened? Like, well, that's just crazy stuff. And then speaking of micro strategy, just remember that uh, it's working out pretty well for him. This is from Jordan Newt. He put this out. Uh, it was a piece from CryptoCrunch. They take a look at the data. The performance since August 10th of 2020, MicroStrategy is up almost 300%. NASDAQ, as much as people talk about how the traditional market is on a roll, it is. It's up 29% since 2020. S&P 534%. Silver's down, bonds are down, gold is down since 2020. But Bitcoin and MicroStrategy are doing pretty damn good. And uh, you're still going to hear people talk about Bitcoin and tulip mania and blah, blah, blah. Even though tulip mania lasted a maximum of three years. Just remind them, you know, Bitcoin's been around. The white paper was 2008. The first Genesis block was 2009. So if you're going to talk to me about that, get your facts straight. And that's it. And then lastly, as we talk about this, just remember that, you know, I know some people will look at me and go, Rob, you're crazy. You should be putting everything into Bitcoin right now because we're just about to hit 
the Bitcoin having in April of 2024, and then we're going to see some massive gains in 2025. Maybe. Remember, you know, we felt the same way here. These are, this is Bitcoin price color coded by risk levels. And as it gets into the deeper blue, that's when we're in the risk levels of very low, 0.1s and below, right? And when it gets in the red, that's when things are just super overheated. You can see it's happened before. But over here, we thought that in November 2018, that that was pretty much it. We're like, well, can't go lower than that. And then had a little peak, but then it went down again, March 20. And then, of course, over here, we see that in June of 2022, we're like, that's it. The bottom's in. Risk is only 0.131. And we put in a lower one down over here. Well, not a lower. Yeah, a little bit. 0.1 again. So I understand where people are coming from. And they're like, probably you don't get it, but the narrative. And I just told you all the narratives, didn't I? About how positive it is. And it could be. But that doesn't mean that something else couldn't happen. And I know TA experts will tell me, it's, you have no idea what you're talking about. It's going to go up. It's going to be a little bumpy, but it's going to keep going up and far to the right. Look, we said the same thing in November of 2022. And look where, what, what happened there. There may be other shoes to drop. The narrative could come out. I'm just saying be careful. But again, you can do what you want to do and go from there. And that's it. That's why I'm reducing a little bit of my Bitcoin. And lastly, lastly, you have to understand one more thing. Bitcoin is the safest bet in the most unstable asset class. I know people will debate me on that one, but it's, uh, it's been a little volatile. But just because Bitcoin and the risk bands go down doesn't mean that you don't use risk bands for, say, Ethereum or, say, Cardano or BNB or Solana or Chainlink. So when you take a look at this, it's up to you now to think to yourself, okay, Bitcoin's in a specific risk band is ETH sliding down? Because ETH right now is 0 0.5, 0.6. .6. And you can take a look at this and say, maybe I want to get into a little bit more ETH, reduce a little Bitcoin, get a little more ETH. Because it always goes in a cycle, doesn't it? A lot of things go into Bitcoin, Bitcoin runs up, then people take profits, put in altcoins, altcoins run up, they take profits, and they stick it all in Bitcoin again. That's usually the cycle of how things go. So these are just options for you to take a look at. I will just tell you that I'm buying a little bit more Ethereum and I'm reducing a little bit of the, the Bitcoin and we'll go from there. So again, let me know you think about that in the comment section. I'm sure it'll be a little controversial, but I remember talking about taking profits in 2021 and people thought I was crazy then. So whatever. Anyhow, let's finish up. <laughs> this is not my usual show. I'll tell you, I'm usually a little bit more balanced and uh, let's be honest, kind of negative, but uh, Let's take a look at some positivity about XRP and Ripple. So yesterday we talked about uh, the case and we talked about why it could be and the decision that it was made. And, and people said, Bob, you're, you're spreading FUD because, you know, this is just a massive win and we should only talk about winning. And I was like, well, there's another piece of that puzzle you have to understand. And, and uh, Brad Garlinghouse and uh, Larson are going to be uh, go through a court case themselves for selling securities and uh, because of the uh, institutional investors, hedge funds. And they're like, don't say that because that's FUD. I'm like, wait. So I'll just defer to John Deaton, who is a lawyer who is dealing with this case and knows a heck of a lot more from me. I'm going to read this verbatim. And you should follow John. Yeah, I put his uh, Twitter account in the description. Also, and we'll talk about uh, Mr. Hogan here, Jeremy, in a second. So this is what he says. He goes, look. There's a heightened level of confirmation bias for many people analyzing the Judge Torres decision. That Judge Torres is the one that uh, granted the decision, which says that essentially XRP is not a security, including very smart and experienced lawyers. Those who practically guaranteed a complete SEC victory, i.e. the SEC has never lost a crypto case and XRP is clearly a security crowd, are now predicting Torres will get overturned, reversed by the Second Circuit. It's one of the things we talked about. Some of those cheering and celebrating the Torres decision, however, are also very smart and experienced lawyers are describing the decision as appeal proof. So you have two sides. There are some sides of lawyers, very smart, very competent, are saying this is gonna get overturned, and other sides who are very smart and very competent saying it will not. Always two sides of the story. However, an appellate decision on this case is two to three years away. Remember that. 
a decision is still two to three years away. Remember, there's a trial scheduled to take place before the appeal. We're talking about Garlinghouse and Larson. Crypto Law US will tackle this issue head on during Tuesday's live stream. Confirmation bias is a real thing. I'll have a very special guest help me provide an objective analysis of the Tories' decision and its likelihood to survive appellate scrutiny. I linked this tweet in the description so you can watch John's crypto law and he can explain it all out to you. But he does say, look, very smart people are saying both two different things. And this is what he believes. And we'll go from there. Also, Jeremy Hogan on Twitter put out a uh, very compelling case for why this will not be overturned. But again, a lot of smart people. I will just say this. I think it's a huge win. I'm glad for the XRP. I always was under the assumption that Ripple would actually win this case. I just didn't think they'd win it like outright. They'd make some concessions and be like, yeah, whatever, give us a charge and you know, we'll go through with it, whatever. I always thought they would win, honestly. And uh, I was on board with that. I just think there's gonna be some concessions, but again, I think it's massively good for our market and I'm happy to see that. And I'm glad they won because <laughs> anything else goes up. So that is today for probably the most bullish video I've done in quite some time. So I'm happy to see it. Are we gonna go up into the right forever? Probably not, I see a little more, more bumpiness, but I'm pretty happy. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section. Now, if you're so inclined, it is Sunday, beautiful day as you can see in the background. Uh, I'll answer your questions to the best of my abilities and we'll go from there. And that's it, if you gotta take off, take off. But if not, stick around. Let's go over some little Q and A. All right. Yeah, Travis says, Rob can do what Rob wants to do. For me, it's a savings account. I'll can DC into 50K. I don't trade. 